All right, sitting back down, transitioning back over. How's everyone doing in the live chat? I did unmute myself. I have to make sure of that because I forgot to unmute myself once. Thankfully, it was a gaming stream and almost no one, no one was watching. Because if I if I somehow did somehow forget to unmute myself, I got many friends in the live chat will be like, "Did John forget to unmute myself?" And it will like, I hey, send me a message and, I'm, and to like let me know or just say something in the chat because I am paying attention to the chat. How's everyone doing? How's it, uh, has, uh, and has had a lot of fun with like uh, uh, Dragon Age uh, Origins last night. Uh, uh, Tabby, you're probably doing. As well as you can, given the circumstances. Uh, Lynn, how are you doing? Well, did you say something about like not being? No, no, I don't think I was something else. Hope everyone's doing well. Then welcome. Uh, and uh, and also uh, Muse Banks, one of my new subscribers, and Matthew Stones. And, no, wait, Muse Banks, one of my new followers, but Matthew Stones, one of my new subscribers. And so, thank you so much. Um. Thank you as much as always, and uh, thank you for hanging out with me. As we are reading about, like, well, this is not the horrible stuff that, like, police do. Well, maybe we're actually in the portion of it, as we are on the essay, Who Watches the Watchers? A, a part of the, like, um, Abolition for the People uh, essay series. This one by Susan Brown and Six Minutes Read. And... It, but like I, I think this it, it, it covers all the, all the bases. But I think it has like the parts of it of imagining a new world, and I like that sort of thing. And also, as you notice, and like type in BLM on command, uh, that like you see a, that uh, there is also another site that you can go to, and maybe not today, but probably eventually after I finish the series, I will. Uh, it'll be a quick thing. i uh, reading about like a two balls. Which kind of lays out a, a plan to do that as well. And you go to like the, so you can, uh, explanation point BLM. Ooh, I should do that in the title. A, okay, I'm going to edit the title right now real quickly. Not just like hashtag BLM, but exclamation point BLM. So that people who know, uh, have to like, it's a command as it were. Uh, the BLM hashtag works for like a promoting that. And, but I don't think like the hashtags really uh, show up that much in like, uh, the search function for Twitch. Uh, uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but like, that's what I should have done. Oh, I also forgot. Well, hold on. I bet like my... Yep, thank you, Tavi. Thank you, Paige, uh, for like uh, retweeting it. Uh, for the rest of those who are still in the live chat and still hanging out and watching, thank you so much. And if you haven't um, retweeted it, I gotta remember to do that. And here is that tweet to uh, of mine that's shown telling that I am live. So you can like retweet that yourself if you have like a Twitter account. So. Uh, you can bring your followers uh, here uh, to this uh, stream as we're going to read about the feds are watching a history of resisting anti-black surveillance. Ooh, uh, more than a century of counter surveillance methods emphasize the importance of abolishment and bonds is a series of articles in October. And so it's an article, essay by Susan Brown in October. Uh, 1976, Ebony Magazine published a story about the popularity among users of citizen band NCB radio, a voice communication technology that allows for two ways exchanges over distances. CB radio ser serve as a means for, uh, of a community organizing and entertainment. With the establishment of social clubs, the invention of vocabularies, and the use of channels uh, almost exclusively by black enthusiasts. The article named Red Fox uh, handled Red Bird, and Muhammad Ali handled Big Popper. Big Popper among some of the more famous users of this technology. Yet also note that um, blacks have been in CBs for years. It's nothing new. And by the way, I did get a new cup of tea. It is Earl Grey. Tea, Earl Grey, hot. Continue on with the essay. Before the rise of CB's radio's uh, popularity on the consumer market, protesters, grassroots uh, activists, and civil rights uh, organizers, organizations such as the Student Nonviolence uh, Coordinating Committee, the SNCC, uh, side note there, this is the one that John Lewis was a part of, uh, and, uh, the, uh, and 
that was uh, very active in the civil rights movements, and that's one that, like, I think, um, um, that Martin Luther King Jr. also worked with a lot as well. Um, and there was that there was a split in some of those like activists that were part of the like a SNCC that were like no I mean the nonviolence is great no but it's not getting the results from it and they probably had like split off from like other groups as were well, joined the like the Black Panthers I think I remember hearing that in one of the back to the essay and the Congress of Racial Equality Corps would make use of this technology this communication technology along with the wide area telephone services watts to monitor threats acts of intimidation harassment fire bombing yep that did happen uh detentions and arrests from police the ku klux klan white citizens can councils and others entities uh, uh disputed uh, deputized by white supremacy mm-hmm. yeah the police did like firebomb uh, places, mm-hmm. and drop bombs. I think Tulsa. That's the word they're referring to. Tulsa. Yeah, I read that. I read the history on that on like on the previous stream. Thank you, Taffy, for that link to that um, article. Um, back to the current article. A caller utilizes the flat rate uh, watts line to make a direct uh, contact with the officers of civil rights organizers, as would do so in an effort to like circumvent local switchboard operators who could, and often would block calls or eavesdrop on conversations and then pass along information to local police, white vigilantes, and others who enact violence. Watts calls are still listened in on by FBI and local police and public airways, and public airway CMB transmissions were often subjected to systematic jamming or of frequencies, as heightened the risk of life and limb. A photo registration workers and those staffing or arresting Mississippi's of Freedom summer uh, enfranchisement efforts. Um, uh, Tavi Wolf has said in chat Tulsa and also the move bombing in Philly. Yes, that's right. I remember here. Yes, but uh, Robert Evans um, talked about the move bombing in Philly in a been behind the police. Uh, Tavi Wolf has also said, I think there were more other instances, at least they were on many other times, when predominantly black neighborhoods were burned by white people. Yeah, Rose with, uh, that's right, it was like, uh, there's a map, actually, of like, Find your or find your racist riots and massacres, and it's just like when you read that history, it's just horrible. But wasn't the move uh, bombing uh, in Philly, which was horrible uh, as well, and yeah, the yeah the move people were a disruption to the neighborhood. They were like uh, the neighborhood really had actually a problem with like what the move people were doing. Um, but the the police answer to that was bombing the place, the drop in bomb there, and it's just like. Uh, but I was I thought that like the move bombing happened later in like the eighties. Well, this was uh, back in like uh, seventy six. Um, so I'm thinking the fire bombing was well. This probably referred to a lot of other fire bombings. You're right. Though. So this probably happened a lot more. Uh, where was I? Okay, yeah. Back to the article. Um, but the data logged through these calls were used to meet them to them dispatches, assistance, and protections, monitor white supremacist activities, and would also form Watts reports. These compiled summaries of incidents recorded could then be shared by other organizations, moment l- lawyers, the Justice Department, the FBI, and news media. Oh yes, the Green Book, and here's the image of the Green Book uh, from like which was it? in the 1940s edition, established in 1936. Yes, kind of like what the the uh, movie that I actually did see um, in the base office. I liked the movie, but then uh, thinking about it more, and was just like, oh yeah, the Christians against it is like right. Uh, Redica Cut did a good video on the Green Book. Um, uh, Tavita Wolf has said, I believe so, but yeah, uh, the police response was to drop a firebomb on the home and then to shoot at everybody including children who ran out in the massacre afterwards and allowed the fire to burn the entire neighborhood. Yeah, referring to the move bombing in Philly. Yeah. That was that might have been in the 70s. So but yeah, it's just like uh the police uh, the police response to like a a activist group that were actually very disrupted into the neighborhood is dropping bomb in the house the the, the move did fortify the whole house so but it's kind of like also like Waco uh, the police uh, like um they not saying that like uh, that like um cult um it was doing a lot of good things uh, or they were all angels but like police uh, his response to sending tanks and then burn down the house was not good so 
And so yeah, the move bombing is just wow. It's terrible. Uh, uh, so uh, going back to the essay, uh, putting communications re related uh, tools to uh, uh, work in the uh, confronting of the anti-black surveillance, the racial terrorism has countless uh, historical precedents. Uh, the uh, okay, so I'm, I'm not sure how, the, if the how I feel about like I saying this word is not like the other n words on the like either n a or a hard r but it's in bro but it's like the negro motorous green book and others like it uh charted uh, uh Automobile routes so that black travelers could navigate roadways and secure accommodations with insistent segregation, sundown towns, and service stations that refused their patronage. Um, much earlier, disrupting the technologies of slavery became an effective way to undermine slavery itself, repurposing for forging uh, slave passages and certifications of freedom. For example, help uh, facilitate escaped black people on the move. In 1851, a broadside caution. Um, a broadside caution colored people of Boston to keep a sharp eye lookout as watchmen and police were authorized to act as kidnappers because the, F the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 had federalized slave catching. <sighs> oh, by the way, yeah, Suntown Towns was even as far north as like Portland. So it wasn't just a South thing, I don't think. Um, continuing the reading of the essay, this print, um, this print matter, uh, offered a important and word in the vice, avoid a conversing with the watchmen and police officers of Boston, especially if you value your liberty and the welfare of the fugitives among you. Sadly, more than 150 years later, a similar caution still applies. And, uh, I already read that, like, I think that's highlighted in the center of the article. So continuing on. In another example, Herod and Jacobs um, meticulously shared the specifics of her cunning uh, ability to outwit her captors. Dr. Flint, a uh, pseudonym, uh, and eventually escaped her her predatory sexual harassment and enslavement in her 1861 narrative incidents in the life of a slave girl. Her self-emancipation began in North Carolina in 1835 when she ran off the, and took harbor in the homes of the others, concealed herself in a swamp, and then in eventually hid in the granite above her, her grandmother's house, and almost seven years later. This hiding space where the darkness was nearly total and with the air was stifling, was only nine feet long and seven foot wide, and at most high only three feet. Mm. She later bore a hole in one of the walls about an inch in diameter uh, through which she could catch some like air uh, peep outside watch children and listen to conversations not meant for her to hear like that of slave hunters planning on how to catch some poor fugitives uh, while still confined in the granite, Jacob would frequently outmaneuver Flint and her hired slave catchers by writing letters addressed to him and to, and to her grandmother, and then sending those letters with a trusted friend who would mail them back to North Carolina by, by postmark from places like New York, Boston, and, and Canada. Jacobs ultimately fled her cramped cell and made her way in freedom to made her way to freedom in Philadelphia and then on to New York and Boston. And and I see a picture here. The picture is provided by CB uh, radios on sale in 1997. Um, back to the article. Taken together, these rebellious acts of insurgency and stealth use of technology, CB radios, watch lines, and constant and, and counterf counterfeited uh, documents, artfully use artful use of the postal services, anticipate the necessary tools of subversion in the face of ongoing police violence and the contemporary s state surveillance. They demonstrate black uh, communities in. in inventive ways of like, working within the existing infrastructure to disrupt the systems that were meant to contain a objective objectivity and profits for them a key part of this these rebellious acts are the networks and free and friendships forged within a system bent on undercutting black social life 
But what does it mean in this moment for corporations to capitalize on people's legitimate fear of racialized violence and the reality of surveillance by the settler state or otherwise? Put differently, when the products and in innovations like dash cams or the Hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over iPhone sh shortcut. I, I just had to like pause and react to it. It's like, hey Siri, I'm getting pulled over shortcut. Hmm. It's a link to the article too. I might read that later. And um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um. And back to the article, are marketed by publicizing as counter surveillance tools. They reinforce the idea that data collection technologies can help people safely navigate a contact with policing. While these products might mitigate harm or at least record them, we should read many of these moves as part of an expansion of surveillance state. Amazon, for example, shared doorbells cameras footage from its Ring surveillance platform with policing agency. The commentary for me, this is not surprising at all. There's been calls for Amazon to please stop the, uh, working with ICE uh, agents and ICE facilities um, with their um, uh, face recognition technology or other kinds of surveillance technology. <sighs> Continue on with the essay. This partnership could have been and come even more troubling as the footage is not, for now, end to end encrypted. And Amazon just announced that the company will soon be selling drones that fly around the interior of users' homes as part of its Ring surveillance hardware. Um. Okay. Okay, I can understand the development and uh, working on drones to deliver packages. Totally makes sense. I mean, we can um, debate of like uh, the efficacy and morality of that if we want to, uh, but like at least for like the, the consumer end of it or providing the service to consumers makes sense. Why do consumers need drones inside their own homes? It's no, that's that's just that's just they're going to just like now use those drones and now to like uh infiltrate and surveil as other people. The the police will use that. They will use that. If they haven't already. I shouldn't rub my eyes. But I will. I'll try not to like do that anymore. Okay, back to the article. Alternatively, we took a look to tools that could be imperfect for now, but that signal a practice of abolitions in their design and methods of use. See not not one one, a app created by former incarcerated uh, software engineers that offer users alternative to calling emergency service without dispatching police. More importantly, the community care practices toolkits and mutual aid acts done by for example uh, survive and punish the bay area transformational justice collective ap aapi women led and stop spying lapd coalition and other organization works to provide uh, the conditions for social trans uh, transformation by selfly disrupting anti-black surveillance and so, being, they offer us a model towards abolition. This, it reminds, okay, this reminds me of my previous stream. I also did, like, um, I read a Vice article about how the Baltimore Police Department were saying, no, we're not using the spying, a uh, plane, um, project that we have working with other, like, uh, uh, the technologies to, like, spy on our citizens. No, we only monitor and use them for when there is a crime and to, like, track people as they go from place to place from the crime scene. That's not true. There was a report about that. They, they, they inspected the files and they said that they delete the files after, like, what, 15 days, 30 days, or something like No, they kept the files on for months. And it's just like they were caught doing that, and then they caught in line. And so, don't. That's the thing with like the police. Uh, when you they get these toys, this not only the surveillance toys, but the militarized toys, they just want to use them. And, and with militarized toys, which is dangerous and like terrible, it's like, do they know how to use them properly? 
you can you you can say that like the military has a bit more training. There's problems with the military. Don't get me wrong, but the, is the military has some more training than police officers in using the militarized weapons that they have and in de-escalations at least. I know of a few examples, but um, I'll finish the article since it's only like a paragraph left. Mm. Undermining racial forms of surveillance is an ongoing practice, but is one that continually exposes the limits and, and weaknesses of the very surveillance. Often, uh, corporate and state actors attempted to undermine that resistance through reform. What can be fully captured and co-opted, however, are the practices of refusals and inventions that hold black liberation as the goal. And that's the end of the, that article. Uh, of who watches the watchers.